there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. My name is Rebecca and very quickly if this is your first time visiting then do click that subscribe button and also the little bell icon and receive notifications for when I upload any new tutorials. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful Esther blanket pattern. Now I've made the complete blanket but obviously in the tutorial I will just be showing you on a smaller sample but I did want you to see the finished blanket so that you could see exactly how it looks once it's worked up. Now the Esther blanket is a downloadable pattern by Laurelin at Snufflebean Yarn so I will of course leave the link for the pattern download. It is a paid pattern and I will leave the link for the pattern in the description box. It, there is a UK and a US terminology pattern so you can choose whichever method you prefer to work by and I have done mine in, let me just grab this, it's a little bit squished because I found my daughter sitting on it before <laughs> but I have used the Sirdar Snuggly Patty Cake for this one and you can see I've got quite a lot of this one left but it's hard to tell now but I've used a decent amount out of the middle but I've used two of these well I bought two of these and I've used probably one and a half for my completed Esther blanket it's this is the one obviously with the beautiful pastel -y shades of pink and yellow and blue and you get this beautiful ridged textured pattern all the way through the blanket it is a two row repeat so it is extremely simple and easy to complete and I have done 100 rows for my blanket and it measures 85 by 60 centimeters so I meant to say the shade as well shade number 752 and I've used a four millimeter hook for the whole of this project you also get this beautiful border as well so the border itself in the pattern is all done in white but I chose to because I had quite a lot of my patty cake left over I chose to do one row in white and then alternate between so I went white patty cake white patty cake just to use up the leftovers a little bit that I had so it, like I say it's a really simple pattern it's a two row repeat and you get this beautiful blanket at the end of it. You can make your blanket any size, but for this one I did literally follow the starting chain that is listed in the pattern, but you can make it any size you want. Okay, so I'm just using up some random scraps for the purpose of the tutorial, but in the pattern it says that you need approximately 300 grams of yarn for the main body of the blanket, and then about 50 grams of yarn for the border. Now obviously that is if you're using a, a normal DK yarn and the four millimeter hook for the main body. So you want to start with the slip knot on your hook. Now if you're following the pattern exactly you will do a chain of 108 which is what I did for my blanket but you can make it any width you want simply by doing chaining in multiples of six. So if you're doing the pattern size, then you'll chain 108. So you yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. And as I say, you'll just do it in multiples of six. So if you want to complete your foundation chain. Okay, so once you have completed your required length for your foundation chain, obviously, as I say, I'm only doing a really small sample here to get you going. So once you've completed that, you will do a treble in the third chain from the hook. So remember, I'm using UK terms here. So this is your double in the US. So one, two, and three. So this is your third chain here. So you will yarn over, insert into that third chain, yarn over and pull up. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two and you're going to work one treble into every single stitch for this row. So again, yarn over into the next chain, 
yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So all the way to the end now you will put one treble in every single stitch. Okay, so I've gone all the way along now and I've got my row which should look like this. And then to move on in the pattern it says to do chain two and then turn and that chain two counts as your treble for the top of this stitch here and so that counts as your first treble and your next treble will go into the next stitch along so you've done the one for this one and you'll go into the next stitch so yarn over go through the next stitch make sure you go through the whole of that stitch getting the V on the top and complete your treble so we want five trebles next to each other so we've done two so we want three more so into in the next three stitches you will put one treble and three so we've got five trebles there now including that chain two so now we're going to start making those beautiful ridges so we want to do a back post treble so you go into yarn over you go around the back of your work and come out in front of that next treble oops and then go back over the front so you're pushing that treble out towards the back of your work so I'll just show you that one more time so you yarn over take your hook around the back of your work and come out in front of that next treble go over the front of that treble and back out the other side so you can see there that trebles out to the back yarn over and pull up and then you'll just complete your treble as normal so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two you'll then treble again into the next five stitches so next one so one two three four five and then again a back post treble around the next stitch so yarn over go around the back of your work and again out through the other side yarn over and pull up and complete your treble this first row is a little bit trickier because you've not got much work already there so it does get easier as you go and then again one treble into the next five stitches two three four five again back post treble around the next stitch and so you'll repeat that all the way across your work your back post treble followed by five normal trebles back post treble and you'll complete that all the way until you get near towards the end of your work so once you've done your final back post treble you should have five stitches left to work into and your very final treble should be in the top of the turning chain that we did so three and then this is the final proper treble that I can work into which is my fourth and then my fifth and final treble of the row will go into the top of these little chains that we skipped at the beginning so yarn over and insert into that chain and complete your treble so that's row two so again chain two and turn and that chain two is going to count as your first treble so we're now going to treble into the top of the next four stitches so we'll have five trebles including the chain two so again you're working into this next stitch along just here so we need four more trebles so one 
two, three, four. And now this time our treble is sticking out towards us. So we're going to do a front post treble around this stitch. So you'll yarn over, go around the back of the treble. It should be really easy because it's already sticking out. So you'll just go around the back of that treble, yarn over and pull up and complete your treble. And then you will treble into the top of the next five stitches. So make sure you don't miss this very first treble right here because it does get a little bit lost behind the post stitch. So yarn over and go and do your five trebles. And then again, you will do a front post treble around the next stitch. So yarn over and go behind that treble Yarn over and pull up and complete and you'll work that all the way to the end of your row which is where I will meet you in just a tick and I will show you how to change colour just in case anybody needs to know. So you should be doing five trebles to finish off your row. three, four and that fifth and final treble will always be in the top of that chain at the beginning of the last round. So again that is how we should be looking at this moment. You should be getting some nice ridges and I'm just going to show you quickly how to do a colour change because that is your row complete. So if you want to change colour at any point, you will do it on the final treble of the round, of the row, sorry. So when you're at the point where you have got two loops on your hook, you'll grab a loop of your new colour, pull it through those last two loops, chain one to secure, so it's not going to count as one of your stitches, and then you're ready to carry on your pattern and you will chain two and then you can continue all the way along. So you're going to repeat rows two and three over and over again. So you'll repeat row two now with your five trebles and then obviously you'll do a back post treble again this time. So yarn over, go from the back of your work and come out at the front, go over the treble. Like I say, it gets easier as you work up because the trebles are already sticking in the right direction. So you'll complete that treble. And then again, five trebles. And then you'll chain two and turn back around. And then you'll carry on and repeat row three, which will be your front post trebles. So you'll be able to carry that on now. Like I say, I did 100 rows, but the pattern actually says 101, and I did mean to do 101, but I actually just miscounted, so. <laughs> but you can see with a variegated yarn, it looks really beautiful as well. You get really nice blocks of color and the pattern really stands out. So if you want to complete the main part of your blanket and then come back when you are ready for the border rounds, and we will work those together. So when you complete your final treble and you're ready to start your border, you will close off. So do a chain one and snip off your yarn and then simply pull out that tail end and you can just tighten up. So then you'll obviously just want to take a moment and sew in any ends if you haven't done them as you've gone along. Okay, so I know obviously this is only the tiniest of pieces to work around. Okay, so the pattern itself says to switch to a three and a half millimeter hook for 
your border. Now that is, as the pattern states, a personal preference and it all just depends on your tension when you crochet. So if you're quite a loose crochet then you might want to swap to the three and a half but to be honest for my big blanket that I showed you I just stuck with the four millimeter for the entire project but as I say it's totally up to you. So you're going to start on the top row so where you've just finished and into any stitch you're going to either start with a standing UK double or as the pattern says you will pull your yarn through so you will do a chain one but that's not going to count as a stitch and then back into that same stitch you're going to do a double so insert your hook yarn over and pull up and yarn over pull through both and you may just want to pop a stitch marker into that stitch that you've just done just so that you don't work into that little chain one by mistake so pop a stitch marker into there and then you're going to do a double crochet into every single stitch along the top of the row so remember in the US these are your single crochets so yarn over and pull up and yarn over pull through both and work that all the way to your corner space well the stitch before your corner space I should say so one UK double into every single stitch. I'm going to stick with white for the whole border, just like the pattern does. I'm not going to be doing colour changes like I did for my actual sample blanket. And I'm just going to stick with the white. Okay, so once you get towards the end of your row, You'll work a double crochet into that second to last treble and then into your very last treble you will work three double crochets. So into this last stitch you'll put three doubles. So one, then back in the same space, two and three. So you've got three double crochets all in that corner space. We're then going to work down the sides of our rows. So I've got two rows in green here. So I'm going to space out three double crochets over these two rows. So there's no set um, rules for this, but I'm just going to put three double crochets. So I'm going to do one there, and then another one. Oops and another one. So I've worked three doubles over those two rows as you can see. And then I've got two white rows so again I'm going to do three double crochets along the next two rows and then the next two rows again space out three stitches so that's my next two rows done. And then when you reach your corner, you're going to do three double crochets again into your corner, two and three. And then along the bottom, just like we did along the top, you're going to put one double into each stitch. Now obviously these a chain stitches so it'll just be at the bottom of each treble so you can see here we've got a treble and then we've got the bottom of that stitch and we'll put a double again the bottom of the next treble a double bottom of the next treble and work that all the way along so if you want to carry on with that and you'll work that all the way to the end again and then you will put your three double crochets into your end space and then work back up the side in exactly the same way as we did by placing three stitches over every two rows and I will meet you as you come to close off at the other end so you've got the rest of this bottom bit to do 
the corner, the side and the neck, the final corner. So I'm pretty much back to where we started from. I've got one last treble to work my stitch into and then you can see we are back. So I'll remove my marker and slip stitch to the top of that stitch. So through the whole of the stitch and slip stitch. To start round two of the border you'll chain one and then we're switching now to half trebles. So UK half treble, US half double. So yarn over and into that same stitch where you've just come up from, you'll insert your hook, yarn over and pull up and you'll have three loops on your hook and you'll yarn over, pull through all three. Mark that stitch and then half treble in the next. So into the next stitch you'll yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through all three. And if you do one half treble into every single stitch along until you get towards your corner space where you did the three doubles in the last round, I will meet you in just a second. So once you get to that corner space where you've got your three doubles from the last round, so you see we've got one, two and three. So you'll work one half treble into the first of that cluster. And then in the middle one here, you will put three half trebles into that middle stitch. One. Two. Three. That's three half trebles all into the middle stitch. And then you'll go back to one half treble and then you'll work all the way down the side again. And then when you get to your corner where you've got your three stitches, you will put three half trebles into the middle stitch in the corner again. And you'll work that now all the way around and I will meet you at the beginning to close off again. I'm almost back again, so I want to do my final half treble into that very end stitch and then I'm ready to close off again. I apologise if you can hear that deep breathing, it's the dog under the table. Um, so yeah, into the top of that first half treble that we did, we will slip stitch and that is the end of the second round of the border and then the final round of normal stitches you'll chain one and then again into that very same stitch where we're coming up from you will do a double so insert your hook yarn over and pull up yarn over pull through both and again mark your stitch and then just the same as the last round but using doubles instead of half trebles you will do a double in every single stitch to the cluster of three that is your corner and in the middle stitch out of that cluster of three you will put three double crochets so I'll work this first corner with you and then I'll leave you to continue it so one double all the way along and as I say, you can switch colours every row if you wanted for the border, that's absolutely fine. I did for mine. So I'm at my cluster of three, so I'm going to do one double and then three doubles into the middle one. One. Two. Three, all in the same stitch. And then continue around. So work that final round of normal stitches and then we will finish off with our very final row. I'm ready now to close off with my slip stitch to the top of that 
first double and that is all of your plain border round completed. Okay, so for this final round, we're going to be doing a round of crab stitch. So to start with, you're just going to chain one and then you're going to work your first stitch. Let me just grab a needle so that I can show you. So that is your chain one and your first. So there's your chain one. That's your little funny slip stitchy bit. So your first crab stitch will go into that next stitch just here. So you've got your chain one here, your little funny slip stitch, and then your first full stitch is this one just here. So to crab stitch, we're going to work backwards. So you'll insert your hook into that stitch. It's bit fiddly, it will take a little bit of getting used to if you haven't done crab stitch before. So insert your hook into that first stitch. You can see there I've gone through the whole of the stitch and I've got my little V. And then you want to yarn over and pull up. And you'll have two loops on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through both of those insert your hook into the next stitch along. So again, we're going backwards. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both, and again into the next stitch. And the next, and you'll just continue to work that all the way around. Now when it comes to your corner spaces you don't need to do any extra stitches or anything like that you will simply do one crab stitch into every single stitch all the way around so just one crab stitch. So I'm at my corner now and I'm literally just doing one crab stitch in each stitch and you'll see you'll start to get these lovely little rope effect stitches. So if you want to work that crab stitch all the way along around the outside of your project so you'll literally just insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both and in the next so if you continue that all the way around now and I will meet you to close off for this very final round and then your blankets will be complete. So once you get back around to where you started from, instead of closing the round with a slip stitch like we might normally do, I'm going to do my final crab stitch and then I'm going to snip off my yarn and I'm going to pull out my tail tighten it up a little bit and then I'm going to attach it onto my hook, uh, needle sorry so you just insert your needle through that first crab stitch that we did and pull pull that through and you can see that that just means we don't have a knot sitting on the top of our stitches and you can then turn your work around and weave in this end really securely so you're going to want to make sure that you weave it backwards and forwards a couple of times through your stitches just so that it gets kept in place but I'm just going to do it really quickly just so that you can see we now have a nice smooth crab stitch all the way around so that is it for the Esther blanket, as I say, it works up beautifully in so many different yarns. It would look amazing as a solid colour or using the variegated as well. But I really hope that you've enjoyed this one and I will see you again very soon for another video. Bye for now.